Hi everyone, it's Go here, your money mindset expert, and I help entrepreneurs to break free from the limiting beliefs, to reverse their money shame, and to blast their money blocks. So we are here today, a little bit later than planned, at um, doing our uh, the number one life hack to banish all your money blocks. So I'm going to wait for a little bit and let people turn up because we are a little bit late. Um, so I'll let people join. Um, hopefully they should be joining us very, very soon. Uh, make sure that I'm actually live too. Uh, I decided to go through here because I think that's probably the best way. I'm not showing myself as live yet, so I'm assuming there's a delay. So um, hopefully Facebook will pick it up and I will be live. Um, <laughs> that's the whole, hopefully that's the point. Um, we've got tons to get through today, so I hope everybody would join me ASAP and uh, we have a great turnout. So let's see, am I live? There's somebody there. Say hello, whoever it is. Say, oh, I know who you are. Um, it's not showing me on mine. So hopefully I am live and um, I must be somebody who's here to see me. So hello, my lovely, who are you? Do share your name and um, hey, Yvonne, my lovely. It's so nice of you to join me, sweetheart. So nice of you to join me. me and Ty, um, hi, Ty, how are you, my lovely? Oh, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Oh, was so nice of you guys to join me. Hi, Matty. How are you, Matty? We have our session tomorrow. I know, I know, I know. So fantastic. We'll be, we'll be getting with a lot of amazing stuff. Thank you guys for joining me. How are you guys feeling? I'm actually not too well. I am maybe probably can hear my voice. I'm losing my voice. <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, not too good at the moment. Um, it, I'm fasting as well, so I can't take any medication. So, so I put a little makeup on, so I hope you look nice. <laughs> <laughs> Ty, I'm not well, my lovely. I've been doing really long hours, and I think my body is taking a toll with fasting as well. So, yeah, even now I'm fasting, and so oh my god. Ha. So yay, let's get started. So we've got a lot. We've got about five people already, which is great, and then more people can join as they do. So let me say the outset. So anybody who shares this and actually comments in the and puts a comment in the in the um in the comment puts shared in the comments. <laughs> box um it's 5 a.m here you look lovely as oh thank you ty and uh, thank you so much you know for waking up so early and joining me my lovely that's so kind of you thank you okay so anybody who puts shared in the in the comments box um and i will um so everybody who does that hi michael anybody who does that i will actually be uh you know selecting one random person and and i will actually uh, they will get to work for me for free. So there is an offer at the end and they'll get to work for me for free. So because we've got enough people on the board, let's get started. I'm good with your precious masterclass. Oh, thank you, Marty. Thank you, my lovely. That's okay. So let's get started because we are um, slightly running behind. So let's get cracking with this. Okay. So we are talking today about the number one life hack, which, um, you know, the number one life hack which can banish all your money blocks. And this is a pro quite a profound statement, but I'm quite comfortable and quite confident in making it because I know once you address this part, okay, there are other aspects to it, but once you address this core element, you begin a journey where you begin to eliminate and actually recognize all your money blocks. So this is a quite profound statement and I'm quite comfortable making it, okay? So today you will learn the, the number one um, life hack which will actually banish all your money blocks if you actually work with it properly and if you actually do what I say to do in this um, in this masterclass. Okay, my lovelies. So, what are we trying to achieve here today? First one, number one, we're going to walk, talk about the four different money mindsets which all of you fall into, including myself. Okay, there's only four different mindsets. Everybody ha falls into one of these. Okay, and you need, and today you should be able to recognize where you are, what is your dominant current money mindset, okay, which you're subconsciously programmed into. This wasn't something that you, ch you chose to do, this something that you um, asked for it to happen. It actually did, um, you know, was programmed into you at the ages from zero to seven. So most of your programming, your internal subconscious programming is done between the ages of zero to seven. Okay, and this particular, you know, the, uh, especially when it comes to money, it's it's something that you take on from your primary caregivers, your mum and dad, or um, your grandparents, or your um, 
you know, foster parents, depending on, you know, what, how, you know, where you were when you were growing up between the ages of zero to seven. Yes, afterwards, well, as a teenager and as an adolescent person as well, you're, you're, you know, you do get some, you know, um, there are some changes in, in the money in this uh, some conscious programming. And of course, you can personally change it also like I have, okay? But generally, the masses and most people that I work with have this programming done between the ages of zero to seven. And unless somebody else like myself has actually addressed this issue, it stays constant and pretty much they're at that they, they level for actually pretty much most of the life. Okay. So that's the first thing we're going to talk about. Then we're going to talk about how your identity, how you see yourself and how others see you and what, you know, what makes up your identity is um, holding you back. How is that feeding into your money mindset okay, or vice versa? How is your money mindset if impacting your identity? What is, you know, what um, are the root causes? What um the symptoms would be having a lack of money, lack of limitation are symptoms. Okay. They're not, they're, they're not the causes. That's a symptom of it. It's like, it's, I will say when you have, um you know, you don't have enough money in your bank account or you don't have enough when you don't have, you know, the kind of flow of abundance in your life, it means that you, those are symptoms, like when you have a cold, I mean, I'm, I'm coming down with the cold now, so when I cough, or when I sneeze, or when I'm, I have a rain nose, those are symptoms, the symptoms, the actual root for the cause of, uh, of those is a cold, which is through a virus that my body is currently fighting, okay, that's the, the metaphor you can use, so your lack of limitations, your, your, the way you're, the fact that you you know your money comes in money goes out or you always manifest an expense whenever something like you know large some money comes up or you get a bonus from work so you manifest the money but at the same time you manifest the expense to go with it okay that means there's something going on those are the symptoms and there's a root cause for it which is actually your money mindset the way your money is programmed to the way your mind is programmed to deal with money and to have and create money okay I hope that makes sense okay so let me just make sure everything's okay so Hi, Michael. How are you, my lovely? Um, Tyson says, shit. Fantastic, Ty. Ty. Um, hi, Rafi. Um, Gossie says, and Gossie's here too. Oh, great. Fantastic. I'm brilliant. Um, just, just, am I speaking too fast? Because I know Michael tell me off. I'm always speaking fast. Um, is my speed okay? Because we've got lots to get through, right? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Everything's good? Yes, makes sense. Hi, girl, hi girl, lovely. Okay, that must be Gossie. I must be... Okay. <laughs> hi, Mahid, and hi, Najibali. Nice to see you, my people. Okay, lovely. So I'm going to carry on, and I'm assuming my speed is okay, and I won't get told off. Yep. Hi, Neelam, my lovely. How are you, sweetheart? Oh, good. Oh, good. So, Neelam, Neelam, you can understand me, sweetheart. So, that's great. Yeah, fantastic, sweetheart. Oh, and thank you for my, my thumbs up. Thank you. All right. Let's get cracking with it, because we've got lots of tons to do. Right. Okay. So that's, um, that's, so the first thing we're going to talk about is your money mindset. Secondly, we're going to talk about your identity. Then we're going to talk about, um, you know, what, uh, you know, how to examine your limiting beliefs at the moment. So I would advise you to get a notepad and a pen and write some stuff down and work out. Um, so you can actually identify your limiting beliefs at this moment, at the moment. Okay. And then fourthly, I'm going to give you a short um, exercise to do morning and evening. And, um, you know, by, by doing that, you can actually change your money mindset every single day, one day at a time. It's, it's a very, very powerful, very, very powerful, simple exercise that everybody can do and change their money mindset. Okay. So why are you at the perfect place? Great. Okay. So let me tell you, I am not the conventional guru of law of attraction. I don't tell you to sit in, in the room and chant affirmations all day. I'm, I'm not about um, saying, you know, all the fluff and uh, other stuff. I talk about real issues. There's no need for you to, you know, spend hours doing vision boards. There's not, and there's, I don't talk about thinking positively. I mean, t I mean, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's like, you know, when somebody is depressed, telling them don't be depressed. I mean, ridiculous, isn't it? How can you think positively if you're programmed to think in a negative manner, especially when it comes to money? So how can you think, so these law of attraction gurus tell their clients, oh, you need to think positively about money. Really? Well, if you're programmed to think negatively about money, especially on subconscious level. So maybe you can use your willpower for a moment of time to actually yeah, think positively about money for maybe a minute or two in the day, but the 20 rest of the 24 hours, you're subconsciously thinking negatively about money. So how is that? How does that work? So I'm not like that at all. Okay. Um, secondly, I want to let, let you guys know there is something at the end of this uh, masterclass. I will be making an offering. If you're not happy about it, you can leave now. I'm not. I'm, it's up to you. But I even if you, even if you don't take up me on the offer, 
staying for this masterclass is completely going to change your life. I can guarantee you that. If you take the notes from, from today's masterclass, if you listen to what I have to say and really pay attention, you can change your life in, with, this, with this masterclass alone. It has, it's packed full of insightful information and give you personal insights. If you get a notepad and pen and write the stuff down, it will you give you personal insights. So I, I highly recommend you stay for this masterclass, even if you don't take me up on the offer at the end. And secondly, um, if you stay for the whole masterclass, um, I will tell you exactly how you can get mirror in the uh, millionaire in the mirror me uh, meditation. So I've made, I've put together a 15 minute meditation for you guys. So it's called mirror in the, uh, the millionaire in the mirror. So if you stay till the end, if you stay till the end and, uh, you know, you, I know that you stay till the end, I will tell you exactly how you can get this mirror in the and this this mirror in the in the mirror uh, sorry this millionaire in the mirror meditation okay and it's absolutely free there's no opt-ins there's nothing to take all you do is you, I'll tell you how to get it and you just go and grab your uh, your copy of the millionaire in the in the millionaire in the mirror meditation so mmm okay <laughs> I love M's what can I say right finally again guys if you can um if you can um finally again guys if you can sh whoever shares this so let me make this very clear so anybody. Anybody who shares this, um, he wants to share your speed is good. Thank you, Mati. Thank you for that encouragement. Gosh, yeah, you're so, so, you're so, so true. Well done. Yes, it is, isn't it? Um, so, guys, anybody who shares this, I just want to remind anybody who shares this, either on your own timeline or in a group or something, I will, I'm going to randomly go and select one person um, after 24 hours after this has been out for, for a replay. So 20, after 24 hours, I'll select one person for anybody who's shared. And also, when you shared, please share it, uh, write share to in the comments box so I know who you are. Because um, Facebook sometimes doesn't, it just plays up. And I, I, I honestly, just to be fair, I want to make sure that anybody who's shared, I can give you, um, you know, equal opportunity to win this possibility. So you will get an opportunity to work with me for free. So whatever offering at the end, you get to do it for free, for free, for free, for free. Okay, all you have to do is say shared and put shared in the box. And remember, if you stay till the end, you get my millionaire in the mirror meditation for free again. No opt-ins required, no nothing. I'll just tell you where to go and you download it. Simple as that. Okay, all good. Right, let's get cracking with it again. Right, okay. So is this for you? Again, is this for you? This is, if you are an ambitious entrepreneur, you want and you want to create, a, you know, you're determined and you want to create success. This is for you if you finally want to stop, you listen to the useless um, information and, um, you know, these so-called law, uh, law of attraction gurus who tell you about how to create and make and have money. If you want to stop with all that, if this is for you, if you are done with all the different online programs and so called, uh, you know, in following all these gurus and the different social medias and trying to find a magic pill that will make you the money, but it will make you money magnet. Again, this is for you. And if you, this is for you, if you're looking for a once and for all solution. So I always say the way I teach is that once you're done with it, it's done. Once you've eliminated your money block, it's done. You may get a different layer for it. You may have to work out a particular block for a time, but once it's gone, it's gone. Once you've changed your mindset, it's gone. Okay. And you'll understand this in a bit when I tell you, once you've changed your mindset, you will never go back. Okay, once you've broadened your horizons, you will never go back. You never take, uh, you never get back, okay? So let's get cracking. Who am I and why should you listen to me? <laughs> I think everybody here so knows me. For those of you who don't know me, um, uh, Sagari said shared, Gus said shared. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, people. Thank you. Okay. Um, who am I and why you should listen to me? So I'm a former banking and finance lawyer. I left my corporate job to pursue my passion to become a money mindset expert and a healer. I help entrepreneurs to break free from the limiting beliefs and reverse their money shame. And I help them to blast through the money blocks so that can, they can live a life of unlimited abundance. I have successfully overcome dyslexia. I am dyslexic, so very dyslexic. You probably can tell that <laughs> in, the, in my left and right gestures. But I managed to, and actually with good grades, complete my law degree and also get five uh, A-levels. I, have, I am a barrister with Middle Temple in the UK. I'm also an attorney with the New York Bar Association, and I'm also a, a fully qualified solicitor with the England and Wales uh, Law Society here in the UK. I and as a lawyer, I am in which is in the past life. I have worked for some of the top international law firms, such as Stadenarps um, and um, Herbert Smith, and and um, Shell also. 
and some of the top companies such as Shell. I'm trained in Totif coach and a certified emotional freedom technique expert also. And, and both, of my, both of these disciplines, I actually just fully focus on money. As If you can see for me, I, I'm all about money. I just, I just talk about money. I, I can help with people with the relationships and other things, but I refuse to. I focus primarily on money because I know that's, that one, that's my passion. And two, because I know how much an impact that can have on everything around you, including your relationship, if you get your money sorted. Okay, I have helped hundreds of men and women and my past clients have made anything between $2,000 and $730,000 within eight weeks of working with me. I'm a mother of two children and two cats and I live in London and have a passion for money in Bollywood. So that's all about me, enough. And I'm not going to go about another 20 minutes talking about how I got to X, Y, Z because, you know, uh, like normal gurus do. That's enough introduction. And in the, if you want to know more, you can, you can look at the page and <laughs> you can see who I am. That's enough introduction. So now let's get into the meat and potatoes of this um, of this masterclass. First of all, so what are the four different money mindsets? Okay. Now, before I even talk about money mindsets, let me be very clear in terms of what do I mean by a money mindset? Okay. What is, um, uh, you know, and why, why is it so important? So now, why is it so important? I'll give an example. For someone like Richard Branson and someone like Donald Trump, do you think, you know, do you think if they, tomorrow a disaster happened and they lost all their money, do you think they will be able to get the money back? I think so. Well, Donald Trump, he's actually not my, one of my favorite people, but he's a good example. Because of his money mindset, he's able to lose his money uh, through a disastrous um, a decision he made, financial decision he made or business decision he made because he tried so many things. But then he was able to come back quickly and become a multi-billionaire again. It, you know, it was, he, he loses the money, he comes back. Richard Branson again, he probably he met, he lost out in so many different companies that he made, he was able to come back. Why was that? It was because of his, his mindset. On the other hand, think of something like lottery winners, okay? So lottery winners, you, do you know, 95%, and this is a fact you can actually, um, uh, says shared, oh, no, it's shared. oh, thank you so much. And Sami says, oh, hi, Sami, I'm a lovely. Okay. So uh, what was I talking about? Yeah. Uh, uh, so now that compared Donald Trump and um, Richard Branson's mindset to somebody, it's an average Joe blogs who wins the lottery. Okay. So somebody wins the lottery. You know, 95% of lo all lottery winners actually go bankrupt within the next, within the first five years, um, you know, of, of, of winning the lottery. And it's so sad. They actually don't only do they go, uh, they lose all of the money from the lottery. They actually go bankrupt. They actually lose more money, even money they had before, they lost, okay? And that's because the money mindset. They haven't changed the money mindsets, even though they're because of various reasons, they're able to uh, get, uh, you know, they were able to... Um, you know, uh, manifest money, they weren't actually able to, uh, you know, they weren't actually able to, uh, um, you know, keep that money and keep hold of it and make sure grow it. Okay. So that's where the money, that's why money mindset is so, so important. Uh, have I frozen guys? Oh no, thank God. I'm okay. I thought I froze there for a second. Okay. Now, when I say, so now let's define what, so that it tells you the importance of money mindset. Now let's talk about what do I mean when I say money mindset? So money mindset, according to me, is the habitual mental attitude that determines how you, you interpret, decide, and ultimately respond to situations, whether the mindset is appropriate or resourceful or not. So that's actually the textbook definition. So let me tell you this. Mindset means your internal money programming. It tells you what you are going to do. It tells you subconscious on a subconscious level what uh, how much money you can make, how much money you're allowed to keep, keep, remember this, how much money you can make, how much money you can keep, and how much money you can save. And you know, what where will you be financially in, in 20 years' time and 30 years' time? And this is the reason why professionals who come to me, such as accountants and lawyers and even, you know, even doctors. They are, they're stuck at a particular line, even though they're earning good, a decent amount of money, they're stuck at a particular level and they're unable to grow their wealth, okay? This is the reason why, this is the core reason why, okay? And the, there's a four di different money mindsets. The very first one is rich. So that's something like Richard Branson, Donald Trump, these are people who have a rich money mindset, okay? The second one, it's people who are comfortable, people who have more than enough money and, they, and, and they're, they're comfortable. And thirdly, that we have um, some people who actually break even. And that actually, I think that counts for majority of the people. I think you know, most of the middle class falls into this. Okay, so lower to working class usually falls into this break even um, part. And then we have the poor or in debt. Okay, so people who are con constantly in debt and, uh, and um, they have a poor mentality. We good so far? I'd love to go catch up later, love. Okay, my lovely, no problem. 
Um, hi, Chris. Okay, so okay, so let's carry on with this. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? I will be answering all your questions at the end, but I just want to make sure that everything I'm saying at the moment is actually clear to you guys, right? I hope it is. Right. So now let's talk about the four money mindsets. Okay. Let's start with the rich first. So those people who have a rich money mindset focus on adding valuing, uh, adding adding value and leveraging resources. Okay, let me repeat that to you. Those people who have a rich money mindset focus on adding value and leveraging resources. They see resources all around them, such as time, money, uh, time, money, skills, technology, and they t- they are driven to leverage them. Now, those are the rich mindsets, okay? People with a rich mindset. Now let's move on to the comfortable one. So if somebody has a comfortable money mindset, they are driven to save. So when they get money, Initially, they'll save a portion of it into the, um, into the saving account, whatever it is, um, and they'll live on the rest. Okay, they'll live on the rest. These people often have very large savings, um, and but they but they live reasonably. They're not they don't spend much most of their wealth. They're they're very com- they're comfortable and they're okay. They they aren't struggling. They're okay. They're comfortable. Everything's just you know ticking by very well. And that would be I think most are like highly paid professionals, such as. Uh, such as uh, I think you know top end lawyers and top end doctors and top end architects and you know so professionals like that so top end professionals fall into this category when they become comfortable they'll save a portion of it and whatever and they'll do it okay um, and the fourth one is break even okay now and so sorry the the, uh, the Hey, we are on the right one. So the third one is break even. So these people um, tend to be tend to be around the working class, and or even lower middle class. And these people are driven to cover their expenses. So what they'll do is that any money that comes in, they first cover the bills, they cover the mortgage, they cover the rent, they cover the the, the food expenses and all the other other expenses that go out. So they cover all of that first, and then whatever remains, they'll spend. That's it. Whatever is remaining, they'll spend. That's how they are. So that every day, so they're, they're the ones who are living paycheck to paycheck. And they are the ones who are always constantly worried about that if they lose a job or if they, this doesn't work out or if they're self-employed, they're constantly, excuse me, if, they, if they're self-employed, they're constantly, constantly stressed about how much money they have in the bank account. Okay. That's the break-even people. Then we got people who are in the fourth type who are, have the in-debt uh, in money, money mindset. These people are driven to borrow and spend. They have spent um, you know, some of the money, uh, some of the money already before even comes. So people, these people, who, you know, who are living on benefits or are on low paid jobs or things like that, they'll, they've already spent the money. They, they, they've, they've mentally have already spent the money before even comes at the end of the week or the end of the month. It's already allocated. They're going to spend there, they're going to spend this, going to spend there. And they've actually borrowed money against it. So these, um, you know, the payday loans example that have come out, you know, recently, especially in the UK, um, we have all these payday loans and other things that you know however those are um you know if those are prime examples of this in debt mentality which unfortunately is actually just feeding it even more so before even get you get paid take out a loan against it and xyz okay unfortunately it's really really sad so now let's talk about how your identity plays in this uh in this mind in in keeping and adhering to this money mindset so now remember your money mindset has been given to you from the ages of zero to seven okay so you are already programmed to behave in a certain manner now you can go to university and and schooling and so forth depending on how you're you know how you're brought up and so forth uh, even that's another topic because that, that depends on whether you know how educated your parents are but even assuming that you do that, you will find yourself that you will come when you come back and adhere to a particular type of mindset depending on, on which was given to you. So if you are if you come from in, in debt, so if you come from an in debt money mindset, you will find that you are working at a job or a, in a profession where which is paying you at least 60, 30, 40, whatever thousand uh, dollars or you know dollars a month, um, I mean, a, month a, a year or something. And so you're in a very, very good salary. So 60,000, 70,000 dollars. In my case, it used to be about 70,000 pounds a year. So uh, having an income like that, which is supposed to be actually you know seen as a, as a very, very good income. But you what you find is you find a way to spend it all. So 
all of the money that comes in, you still spend it and you still be in debt. So a lot of my clients, especially who are accountants, uh, and financial, and especially, I mean, maybe it stands out more. So it's, I have a lot of accountant clients who've come to me and they have, um, you know, mountains of uh, credit card debts. So the income is something like 60,000 a year, but they have $30,000 worth of, uh, uh, you know, credit card bills. It, it's just, it's astounding. Is that making sense to you people? I mean, is that, is that making sense? I, am I making sense to you in terms of, you know, the way this, this can play up? If this is really key and I really want you to understand this point that if you, um, if you, if you will have this mindset of in being in debt or being poor, you can even train up and become a professional, but you'll find the way to self-sabotage yourself to be able to spend the money that you don't have to be able to make the money. Does that make sense? Okay, I hope it does. I'm not getting any love. Can I have some love, please? Give me some love. Give me some love. Give me some love. No love? Give me some love. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yes, totally, Claire. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gossia. Yes, great info. Thank you, Gossia. So, yes, it's... um. Okay, okay, so thank you, thank you. Thank you for my love. Thank you for my heart. Oh, thank you. Okay, so come back to, coming back to this point. If you, even if you have... Uh, even if you have this meant uh, this um you know if you have if you're stuck with the, the poor mentality mentality the poor money mindset uh, you will end up having uh, even if you do go on to uh, you know to earn a particular uh, you know profession you know which is established and respectable and high end earning you will find a way to self sabotage so that your debt goes up so as your income goes up so does your debt okay so the income debt and saving ratio will stay the same depending on how your mindset is actually programmed up okay okay so let's go on to the next one now so now how does your um so how how do we identify where your identity plays a role in this okay so if you have your pens and papers you have your note do you have your uh, notepads or something i would highly suggest you do this with me or at least write the questions down or, or come back and do this section this is key this is going to be key and uh, if this is that this is actually the life hack that i've been talking about this is the greatest hack ever and it will give you great insights in terms of who you are and in terms of where you know where you can go with your with, with your money mindset it's, it's 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 a very shortcut to actually it's actually shortcut to um, you know, cutting, getting rid of all your money blocks in one go because all of them will come to surface and you can limit them all together. It's like stirring the pot. As my clients know, I talk about stirring the pot. So stirring the pot with all your emotions and your negative uh, money mindset uh, beliefs come to surface. And if they come to the surface, you can swipe it off one. You can clean it all the way through one, okay, through one go. So let's go. Okay, so if you have your if you have your notepads, whatever, or a pen and notepads handy, then start writing the questions down. So tell me, what is your identity? So what kind, what social economical group do you belong to? What location do you live? Where did you grow up? What do you do for a living? What is your religious background? This is another important one, people, because people actually dismiss this. It's not. Your religious beliefs will really dictate how you view money and how you view others with money and how you view um, how your tribe views you with money and how you'd see whether you can be a part of a tribe or not, whether you want to be part of it or not. OK, religion plays a major, major role in terms of how we identify ourselves and how, what, you know, where, where we see ourselves in the society. So. What's your religious background? What do you believe in? Um, and, and just just really think about it. So what are your skill sets? You know, what are your skills? What are your good points? What are your bad points? Are you a confident speaker? Are you somebody who's articulate? Are you somebody who's confident speaking in public? Are you somebody who shies away from that? Are you a shy person? Are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? Are you somebody who likes to party? What is your identity at the moment? Okay. Are you an educated person or you're a working class person or you're somebody who works in, um, in the, on the internet, um, on the internet market now or a network market? and so anything everything that you that when you talk, when you if somebody was asked to describe you you know what would you describe yourself as what what is your personality what is your identity um you are you you know what is also which um which country do you come from so that's another one because that can hold you back as well you know these limitations because the countries have taken this limitation oh i'm from this region i can't make money we you know we're, we're everybody's poor here things like that okay what do you identify yourselves with 
So please write these down now because this will give you key insights in terms of who you are and, or, you know, and what is making up you at the moment. And then if you look, once you've written this down, have a look to see how many of those, you know, if, so for example, um, your religious beliefs. So if, if you are, for example, I'm Muslim, so as a Muslim, as a Muslim, I'm a Muslim woman. So what's my religious beliefs? Not what the religion teaches, what is what the culture teaches, okay? So culturally, according to, you know, oh, you know, money is not something that I should be asking for. I should be happy with what I have. I should be grateful to God for what I have. And not money is for evil. And I guarantee it doesn't matter if you're, if you're Christian or if you're Muslim or if you're Buddhist or if you're something else, okay? Hi, Reed, my lovely. Whatever, or Hindu, or Sikh, or, or anything else for that matter. All, all, all religious cultures, not the religions, the cultures actually teach, oh, money is a root for all evil. That is one of the things. If that's one of your, if that's the case, and if you're overly religious, you're going to have that belief. You're going to, you're going to buy into the ideology that um, I can't have money, money, um, and money is a root of all evil, money, um, you know, money, in money incites greed, money does this you will find yourself adhering to it even if logically you don't believe it subconsciously if you if you identify yourself as being a muslim as being a hindu as being a sikh as being a christian as being whatever you will identify with all the religious beliefs another religious the the cultural religious beliefs i say cultural because the religion themselves i'm not talking i'm not getting to it i don't believe any of the religions say anything about money i really don't it's the culture, the the priests, the the pundits, the the, the mullahs that they, they have put this cultural thing on the religion, saying if you are a good Muslim, you you know money your money should not be a goal. If you are a good Christian, you should not be greedy. You should be giving. If you are a good Hindu, you should be thinking about others and, and so forth. This is this is what this is key, okay? And that's why I'm I'm talking about you know that's also that's one thing. Another one it would be uh, which which school did you go to? Did you even go to school? Did you actually go to university? If you didn't go to university, so if you didn't go to university, you're um are you not a graduate? If you're not a graduate, what well, how much money are you allowed to earn if you're not a graduate? See my point? If you are a graduate, okay. So if for example, if you are a, a, if you've been to university, so what does that mean? Um, what degree did you do? What university? All of these things would be part of your identity what you identify with okay i'm a i'm a qm because i went to kumari university in london i'm a I, i'm a kumari graduate and i'm this and i'm a lawyer so this is all making your identity now if you look at them and take one thing at a time it will identify it will begin to identify what are your subconscious or hidden um beliefs okay so what are your hidden uh, ideas about money so if you are um if you're a lawyer um so what do lawyers earn you you know what do all lawyers earn in general okay and you find your income would your income would fall into the bracket it may be at the high end it may be the low end but it'll be within the bracket of what lawyers earn okay if you identify yourself as a lawyer that's what will be if you identify yourself as a doctor again your income will fall between the two brackets okay the top and the low end but it will be within that bracket even though you're you could be a lawyer and have business on the side and make millions that's possible but you won't think about that unless you work on it okay and so this is the reason why your income will be stuck between that it may mean that you're in the comfortable stage it may be, mean that you're in a break-even stage but it will mean that you are stuck in a particular stage another one would be uh, identify which, you, which where you live so where your house is um i live in london I live in it, you know, London's very expensive. So again, um, but I, you know, then I used to say, oh, I live in the poor part of London. Again, I have identified myself as being poor because I'm living in a region which is actually not affluent. I'm not living in Chelsea and Kensington. So I, <laughs> I must be poor. Even though I live, anybody who lives in London cannot possibly be poor because, well, actually most people anyway, because it's an expensive place to live. You move out if, you, if you're unable to afford in London. Most people do move out because they can't afford to move, live in London. Um, so that's another thing, okay? So even though I, you know, I, what are you identifying with? This is key. This is key. This is the, this is what the first step to do. Okay. And nobody else was, as far as I know, nobody else is talking about this. So this is a way to identify what are your subconscious beliefs about you about, and what are your hidden ideas about money? What, how much money can come to you? So this, this, once you unpacked all of it, you will clearly see what are your parameters? What is your top end and what is your low end in terms of how much money you can make, have or create? This will dictate how much money you can have in your bank account. It will dictate how much money you can have in your savings account. It will dictate how much money you're able to save and, and um, in investments and so forth. Okay. 
this is crucial this is key okay and you need um breaking free from it requires work this requires internal work it cannot happen like this without um you know you know you think oh i can read books and i can do this and i can do that I can change. no it doesn't okay this is why people go onto these seminars um like tony robbins seminars and all the other seminars and get jazzed up for about two weeks and come back and slump back and get back into old habits this is why this is why you pick up think and grow rich and you read about you know you read it cover to cover and then for a week or two you're jazzed up and you want to make changes and i've seen this happen with my own eyes with two people okay i had a friend who picked up recently think and grow rich and then she went on to get the movie think and grow rich and she's really jazzed up and really focused on on changing her money mindset but two weeks later back to where she was and she's back to talking about money in a negative manner she's very negative about money and i and i love her to bits and i want to help her but and i can't help her until she wants to get help herself because she's not ready to identify it every time i talk about something she's she goes the other way so she's not ready that's her choice but i'm telling you this is what happens so you can read all the books you can go to all these seminars and still be stuck in the same income bracket because you're identifying yourself as being in this okay that's a problem um Okay, so where are we? We're here. Oh, good. Okay, good. We're on track. I just want to make sure that I was on track for it or anything. Okay. Oh, thank you, Garcia. Okay, so this is the, the so I'm going to give you another example. So I give an example of um, um, a, a woman who's actually a really good, she's a professional. So she's a professional and she's working at, um, you know, at a, maybe at a top end uh, accounting firm and she, you know, and she takes a career break to have a family. So that's fine. That's quite normal. And that's possible. Okay. She's taking a career break to have a family. And then, um, uh, for some reason her marriage doesn't work out and she, you know, she becomes, um, divorced. So now she's going to become a single parent of say, for example, two or three children. She's a single mom of two kids. What has she identified with? She's now identified being a single mom, two young children and as soon as she identifies with that she takes on the identity of single parent single mom two children and everything associated with that all the negative uh, negative um, you know associations lack of time lack of money stressed out looks awful um you know it's time poor and money poor and money and, kid, and she's struggling to you know between the school run and the kids and the, and everything else those are things that either come to mind when you think of single mom and two kids and she's taken all of that on. So what do you think will happen to her idea of money? What do you think her, uh, her attraction towards money would, uh, you know, what, what would happen to it? What do you think? Do she think she, she will attract more money or less money? Okay. Until she's addressed this I, ideas and trust until she dissociates from being a single mom and two kids, she will be stuck in this cycle again, which actually puts limitations on her money and time even more. So this is again key. You need to, distance yourself from any of these identities so you know um, when i say i'm a lawyer i, I openly say i you know i'm, I'm a lawyer by profession because i'm proud to be a lawyer i you know i've worked hard for it <laughs> for god's sake i'm dyslexic people i worked bloody hard to be a lawyer it was it was years of torture reading gosh and boring stuff too i don't mind reading Benjamin franklin i just didn't mind reading those, those case studies right but uh, i don't identify with earning like a lawyer so my income is not within the brackets now, which would be, which are defined for lawyers. So you have top end lawyers who are earning something like two, three hundred thousand dollars and the bottom end, which you know, who are only about 30, 40,000 um, um, a year. And so that's the bracket for most, for most lawyers. I don't adhere to that anymore because I, you know, I'm a lawyer, but I'm not working as a lawyer. Hello, go. How do you surrender to let the money flow to you instead of trying to be in control of how it happens? Um, Kimberly, hold on to that question. I'll answer that question at the end. So I'm going to keep it. Okay. But I'll answer that in, in, in a bit, my lovely. Um, where was I? Okay. Oh, thank you, Kimberly. Just to let the new people who joined, anybody who joins, um, joins, anybody who's recently joined, if you share the, the broadcast, if you share within your group or your own timeline and you write shared in the comment section, I will actually pick, go, go through everybody in the uh, who's shared it and who's actually said shared because honestly i'm not relying on facebook to let me who's shared so as long as i have you in the uh, you know you've written shared in the box i will come back 
uh, after 24 hours and I'll pick one person to work with me for free, for free, for free, for free. Okay. So I'll pick one person to work with me for free. So please share this. Um, if you're getting value from this and if you think somebody else can get value from this, please do share it. And I will pick one person to work with me as a reward for, you know, for being so generous. And Kimberly, um, you're welcome, my lovely. I will answer all these questions at the end. And so that I, can, I just want to, I've got lots to cover and I want to make sure I cover everything. Okay. And by the way, everybody who stays to with me to the end of, um, of this, uh, masterclass, I will tell you exactly how to get my millionaire in the mirror meditation. It's a 15 minute meditation. No opt-ins required. No, nothing required. I'm just going to tell you where to go, what to do. And you'll get that for free. Absolutely for free as my gift to you for staying on this, uh, masterclass till the end. Okay. So that's my, something else to remember. Okay. So now coming back to now coming back to the, the the identity part. Okay, so now that you've worked out, oh thank you, Matty. So now that you've worked out how much, uh, how you know what is your parameters for how where your where are your parameters in terms of how much money can uh, how much money can come to you and how much money is the maximum and the low in the you know the maximum and the minimum amount of money that can come to you, and then you also work out you have other levels as well. You know how much money you can keep. So keeping the money that is in your savings. Okay, how much money is in your savings? So for example. You know, in the people who are in the comfortable, they save just for the sake of it. Whereas those people in the uh, who are the break even part, those people will only save for a particular thing. So they'll save for things like a holiday. They'll save for a laptop. They'll save for um, a, a rainy day. They'll have specifically things things they save for, and that's it. And they'll spend the rest. Whereas people who are comfortable mindset, they'll make enough money to be able to have their life that they want, live a comfortable life, which is you know maybe a four or five bedroom house and you know a couple of nice cars and nice holidays a couple of times a year so they're, they're comfortable they're very comfortable and they'll have a large saving pot at the same time and they'll make sure their saving is a priority um that's the difference between the, uh, the two identities okay and you find most professionals fall between these two two mindsets they either have the break even or they have the the comfortable uh, mindset and depending on where you are that's how much money you allow yourself to have if you are, if you, if you're anyway, if you are um, more, if you, if you've grown up in, in a poor environment, um, example, like, you know, I grew up in, in a, in a council estate uh, in East London, in East London, for God's sakes. So I grew up in, um, in East London in, on a council estate. So I, tr I, I pushed myself forward a lot, a lot. And I was, I, you know, became a barrister, I became a lawyer and I did earn a lot, but I stayed in the break even part because I didn't allow myself to have the savings. So I would, I, you know, I would have the money and I didn't have to save up for a particular thing. I would have enough money. I'll buy the, you know, the laptop that I needed. I'll buy the, the five star holiday. I'll buy the Gucci bag. I'll buy the stuff. So I would, you know, pay all my bills and pay everything and then spend the rest. And that's it. And I and I and I was and I was spending with like there was no tomorrow, um, thinking you know money's going to come easily. It, it doesn't. It doesn't work that way. Okay, so you need to change your mindset around it, and that's that's the key. Now, why is this so important? Coming back to having and creating money. Okay, <coughs> and I think Kimberly, this will answer your questions. <coughs> By the way, guys, I'm fasting, so I can't drink water. So if I'm coughing, I, I apologize. Okay, I just I, I'm not feeling well. <coughs> And I'm fasting, so I can't take medicine either. Hey, but okay. So Kimberly, this may answer your question for you, my love. Okay. So how do you um how do you create, have, and make money with your with these mindsets? The, uh, the short answer is you cannot. So if you are if you if you have that uh, the poor mindset or break even mindset, the problem you'll have is every time you go to use the law of attraction um, to, you know, in, in the conventional methods, in the conventional ways that people are, in these, these so-called gurus are showing you, you will actually take one step forward and three steps back. And I'll tell you why. Okay. I'll tell you why now, because every time you go to manifest a certain amount of money, your internal subconscious programming will kick in. Okay. It would kick in. It's like the, it's like a thermostat. So if, if I give you um, a thermostat an example, okay, which I think works really well here so if your if your room temperature is set at say for example 20 degrees celsius it, it's always going to be 20 degrees celsius every time it falls below it you the heating kicks in and your um and your, your temperature goes back up but once it hit it, it gets to 21 again your thermostat kicks in it turns the heat 